Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to talk to you about a feature in the software that's very important. You'll use it a lot in your design process, and it's something called the Site Manager. Normally, it's over here in your workspace on the right-hand side in the upper section. This palette, like any other palette that's part of the software, doesn't have to be here. That's kind of where it is by default. You can move these palettes and make them float like this one is, or you can dock them into place like this one is. And like I say, it's normally in this section. So I'm going to leave it there for now. That's where I like to use it. But you can move yours around if you want to. The Site Manager is important because it's a bird's eye view of your entire website, meaning a list of all of the pages that you're working on. And as your site begins to grow and you get a number of pages, the Site Manager continues to be even more important because you need to jump from page to page during the design process. And it's just an easy way to do that. I'm going to go over some of the features of the Site Manager, but the first one I want to show you, it's not showing here right now, and it doesn't show by default. It's something that you have to turn on if you want to use it, and I like to turn this feature on myself. You'll notice that while we're listing these files, these are all pages, you do not see the extension. This actually happens to be a folder, not a page, but this one is a page, and these pages would have extensions. For example, index would actually be called index.html. But you don't need to put that in your file name because 90 Second Website Builder automatically does that. The extension for the page is decided upon in the page properties. Let me move the camera down just a little bit so that you can see that if I was to right click on this and go down to the page properties, I can bring up that window you may be familiar with where we can set the file extension. Again, it defaults to HTML, but there are a number of options depending on the need for that page. But my point is, you'll notice it doesn't show in the file name of the site manager. And sometimes I like to see these because some of my pages are PHP. One of the things you can do is you can go up to the Tools menu, click on Options, and under the General tab, you can see that you can select this option right here. It says show page extensions in the site manager. I'm going to check this box, but you'll notice that it also says restart required. That means the software has to be restarted, not your computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to actually shut down 90 Second Website Builder. I'll go up here to File, and I'll exit. Now I've just relaunched the software. Now I want to open up the project I was working on, so I'm going to go to File, Recent Documents, it's up at the top here because it was my most recent one, and it brings up the document I was working on, the WBS project that I had going. It's this one. Now if we go over back to the Site Manager where we were, you'll notice that these extensions now show. Again, they're not part of the name, they're part of the page properties. And I like mine to show sometimes because I like to see whether I'm working with a PHP page or HTML. So that's one of the things the Site Manager can do. But there are a whole list of features that you'll find convenient in the Site Manager. Let's start to look at them here. It has this menu bar across the top, and each one of these icons does a different thing. For example, if you want to create a new page, you can just click this button and you'll insert a new page. If you're working in the jQuery Mobile Site Builder, this is a way to insert a new mobile page. This icon allows you to insert a page from a template. So if you have template files installed in your software, clicking on this will allow you to find one and open up that page and add it to your project. When you click on this icon, it allows you to insert an external file. For example, let's say you wanted to include a PDF document that people are going to be able to download from your website. Well, you can insert that into your file manager structure if you want to by clicking this icon and then locating that PDF on your computer. This one creates a new folder. I have some folders within my site, as you can see right here. Folders are not files. They're containers of other files. They're also called directories and each directory can have its own set of pages, like this one does. Here's a folder called Templates, and all of these are web pages within this folder. This icon simply allows us to edit the page that's selected. So if I select the index page and I click here, it's going to allow me to open up that page. I can also edit the page just by double clicking on this file and we'll be in design mode for that page. This is an important one I use a lot. It allows me to clone a page. What that means is, I can take a page that's fully designed, like this one, click on the clone button, and I'll have an exact copy of this page, an exact clone, which is a great part of the web design process because if you've designed your page fully and you want to make a second page that looks just like it, all you have to do is clone the page and then just make the minor changes to it. So for example, you don't have to redo the header and the footer or any of the common content, just change that part of the page that you want to change. Now I use that a lot when I have pages that all are very similar. For example, 
On my videos pages, I have quite a number of pages. Each one of these has a video. And so rather than recreate all of these pages, because they all have pretty much the same layout. In fact, my video pages are almost identical, except for the video itself, the title of the video. So rather than rebuild this page every time, what I'll do is build one, then clone it. Then when I open up that cloned page, all I have to do is change the video, the title of that video, and any other things that may pertain to this particular page. But all of these pages are basically a clone of another one. That's where cloning comes in really handy. Let's go back to the site manager and look at some other things. If I want to delete a page, you'll select it first and then click on the delete button. And then this is just another way to get to the page properties. I've shown you several ways to do that. One of them was to right click on the page, go down to page properties. Another one is to out in the canvas, right click on a blank area of the canvas and you can go to page properties. Another one is to go up to the page menu and go to page properties. But here's another way. You can select the page here, click here, and it will also bring up the page properties window. So there's about four or five different ways to get there. You can also move your files around in any order that you want. And that's what these buttons do. They move them up or down. The order of your pages doesn't matter as far as the website goes when it's online because a website's not linear. It is relational. And so it doesn't matter the order of these pages. The site structure will matter as far as what pages are in site folders, of course, because that affects their path. But there's no particular order that pages need to be on on the internet when they're on the server. This is just for your own purposes while you're designing. And as you can see, I've got a lot of pages in this website. And so sometimes I want to move things around so I can get to it faster. I like to keep the index page on top because I go to that one a lot. The other thing you can do though, is you can sort these pages. Let me show you what I mean. While these icons give us all of these features, right clicking on any one of these gives us a number of other features. As you saw before, page properties was one of them. But we can also create a new page, add a mobile page, a new page from a template, or we can find a page because remember, once you have lots of pages, you might need to search for one. You can insert that external file, again, maybe that PDF document, edit a page, clone a page, delete, or even rename the page. Here's another one that comes in handy. So by right clicking and selecting rename page, I can go in here and rename my page. Remember, I would not change the extension. I would just rename this portion of the page. The extension stays where it is. But right clicking gives us a lot of other options, moving files within the site manager up or down or sorting them alphabetically if that's easier for you. You can also import pages from here. This would import an HTML page, say from a regular HTML document or a third party template or even from the internet. This would import a page from another 90 second website builder project. And these options down here have to do with the sitemap. That is the Google sitemap. And there's a video about how the Google sitemap works, but some of the functionality and the settings for each page can be done here. You can change the frequency and priority as far as how often Google needs to crawl this page. Again, you can watch the Google sitemap video for those details. Also, you can select to not publish this page. These options are also in the page properties, but here's just a fast way to get to one. So why would you want to not publish a page? Well, sometimes you have pages that you don't want to go live yet with them online, but you're still working on them in your project. Well, you can just check a box that says don't publish this page. This will only be for pages that you do not want to be part of your website yet. So for example, I'm working on some pages that I'm not done with and I, when I publish, I don't want them to go up to the server yet. And so this is what they look like. When you select do not publish a page, it puts a red X on that page. So for example, if I didn't want to publish this page, and I selected that, you can see there's a red X. This page will not be published the next time I publish my entire website. You can also set the synchronization. Again, there's another video about using parent-child pages, and you can decide if you want this page to be synchronized when you use that kind of navigation. Also, you can decide if this page should be included in the search index. If you're creating a, a search feature or search function on your website, and you want people to be able to search all of the pages, you can exclude pages uh, in that search process. You can also exclude your page in the sitemap in case you don't want Google to crawl that particular page or keep track of it. All of these features are just a part of the page properties, but this is just a faster way to get to them. This is called a context menu, and it's just a quick way to get to those features. So as you can see, the site manager is a really critical part of the design process, and you'll see that it is feature rich, which is good because you're gonna be using it a lot as you're building your websites in 90 Second Website Builder.